Hi everyone, it's Kylie. Today I'm going to do my second unboxing. This is probably about five weeks after the first Mantis I received from Pantera Pets. But today I have Scott here. This is my boyfriend. He's not in very many videos. But, oh, here. Sit at my level. Come share this chair. Share this chair. Share this chair. Okay, put it here. Yes! Okay. You picked a great day for my hair. I know, it's beautiful. Eyebrow. Yeah, oh <laughs> great day. Great hair day. It's been like this ever since I've been wearing the, the whole gel. Yeah? Everyone comment if you like <laughs> Scott's hair or I should change it. So here's my other mantis. This is Druid. I already did an unboxing video and that will pop up at the end of this video so you can watch that. And uh, I probably will make more videos in the future about her. So we'll just put her right there so she can witness this unboxing. She's just She just wants to meet her brother or sister. They won't be living in the same enclosure. I'll show you guys how I set up my enclosure afterwards. I ordered it on Friday and they ship out on Mondays. Um, so that the mantis doesn't stay in transit over weekends. So we have all of this newspaper in here, and I can feel the heat pads right on the side there. Aww. Aww. Look at this baby! Aww. It's a baby! <laughs> oh, that is so cool looking. Oh my gosh, he's so cute! Here, I don't even know how to tell what it is yet. So I guess we're kind of hoping for a boy with this one because we have a girl and it's not like we can mate them, they're different species, but it looks so creepy and cool. Whoa! Uh, it does. That's literally the coolest thing I've ever seen. That is freaky. <laughs> I wonder how easy that thing would break on the top of its head. I hope it's strong. Look at that baby! The it's wiggling! Legs. Look at its antenna, it's wiggling. Yeah. What the heck is it doing? It's trying to hyper locate you. Because look at its butt, its butt's like touching its back. Yeah, it's folded up. So, so I guess I should try to count these segments. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's beautiful. What a cool little baby. So we're thinking about the name Reaper, but what are some other cool names, Scott? Oh my goodness, it's just a little bit smaller than this one. Druid, you want to meet your friend? <laughs> what if she just starts going? I know, I, I'm so scared that Druid's just going to grab it and start devouring it. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. This baby ghost is literally, its antenna are like freaking vibrating like a crazy little thing. It's literally just, I'm, it, Druid doesn't do this. Um, by the way, Druid is a higher deal of Venosa, which is a giant golden Asian mantis. The ghost mantis is a Phylocrania paradoxa. And I really, really, really love that name because it's like, Phylocrania, which is probably talking about its weird head shape, and then Paradoxa. And that, I don't know what that would translate to, but it just is a cool word. Hi, baby. Hi, I love you. Based off of how squiggly and thin this mantid's uh, crown thing is, I think this is probably a boy, but you know, I thought she was a boy to begin with too, so. We'll see. I think I can't really fully tell until at L4 or 5. I think this might be an L3 or an L4. But either way, it's it's just a still a baby. I I need it to get bigger in order to count its segments properly. So I'm going to show you guys how I create the enclosure for this mantis. My mom and I have like a ton of fake of uh, plants and stuff. But in order to make this safe, like, I basically rinsed it in water a thousand times. Like, I just, like, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, 
hot water, cold water, hot water. Like basically I didn't use any soap. I just tried my best to like really get any chemicals out of it or any like dust off of it. Anything that's just been there that I didn't notice before. Um, I explained this one in the last one. I bought this off of Chewy, but it was like just one simple spiral circle. And then I made it into like a heart shaped base and then um, I stuck flowers all over it. So now it just looks really pretty. Uh, this enclosure is its temporary enclosure because the glue inside of the small cashew jar that I'll be putting this one in is curing right now since it's too, um, this is like a little big for this mantis, uh, and also ghost mantises don't have the type of feet that can hold on to glass or plastic, I think. I think it depends on the texture of it. So what I've been doing is using a very flexible, soft mesh. It's a non-metal type of window mesh that I bought off of Amazon. And it's really flexible and stretchy and it's just not, it's not unsafe for their feet is what I am trying to say. And so I actually already put some on the inside of this enclosure and it's just literally lined against one wall and then in the cashew jar it's lined up against both of the thinner sides of the jar so that I can still see through the big side of the jar but I'm gonna show you here let me take you off so I don't hurt you little tiny crazy thing oh my goodness you're so sweet there we go here I'll put you right there so what I'm going to do is take this enclosure, I'm going to put the substrate at the bottom. I have the substrate in this, um, which is, it's sphagnum moss in there. This is just a candle jar. The reason I'm going to use sphagnum moss for the ghost mantis is because the ghost mantis actually needs a little bit more humidity. My Hyrdula venosa needs um, much lower humidity, so I'm always a little bit worried that I'm over humidifying her. With this mantis needing a little bit more moisture, I figured I would use the substrate that holds moisture really good. And then for uh, for Druid, I just use a paper towel at the bottom because I also think it, you know, as long as the rest of the enclosure looks cute, it's not that ugly and it keeps things clean because I'm able to see how much poop is in the enclosure, how much bug remains are in the enclosure. Therefore, it reminds me when I need to clean it. I still clean it once a week, no matter what, but like, you know what I mean? I just, I'm at least able to see where all of it is. Okay. And I also have a hygrometer, so I'll stick that in there later, but right now I'm just trying to get it started. So I have the substrate at the bottom, and I'm actually, I have some distilled, like this is spring water from a water bottle, actually. So I'm gonna spritz the bottom in there so that the sphagnum moss kind of holds that moisture. Now I'm going to put this vine in there. And yeah, because this mantis can't actually hold on to the sides, it needs to have a lot more stuff um, to hang on to. Okay, baby, you're going in. So I'm just, I usually don't put the mantis in on something, but today we're just going to do this because He's right there. There we go. That works. I have a bunch of purple tool. It's very similar to the tool that's stuck on the lid of this little deli cup that this ghost has arrived in. They also sent Druid in that too, but it's just this little bit of um, tool. So I'm going to use a bigger piece of tool and a... So here I have the tool and then I have a rubber band and I'll just put that on there for now. I hope it's not too unprofessional that you can see my uh, background edges. Honestly, it's not like I'm trying to hide the fact that this is a fake wall. <laughs> Go. and now this ghost has a home so we have 
these two enclosures. I actually have a good feeling that Druid is going to be um, jealous for a while that I got a new baby. So I am super aware that when a mantis is next to another mantis in different enclosures, um, you should be putting something in between them so that they don't get aggravated by each other and that'll cause eye rub and eventually they might go blind because they'll just be really frustrated and trying to get to it and they'll just keep bumping their head on the glass. So that's just a little tip for anyone who doesn't know that. But here is my little love bug, uh, Druid. You can see I spritzed some uh, dew drops on the glass for her because I just wanted her to drink some of it, so I put it right there. She's right there in that little halo light. I can't focus on her, but you get the gist. She's right there. That's her little bum. And then my ghost is right here. Look how beautiful he is. I'm so happy. So, here we have it. Here's the two enclosures, my ghost and my um, giant golden Asian mantis. So yeah, this is what these enclosures currently look like, but once my smaller enclosure cures, I will put this one in the smaller one. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about mantids, uh, ask me in the comments, but also if I'm doing anything wrong, or if I am clearly just, if I don't know what I'm doing, please just tell me some tips, just so you know. I have been doing so much research and I'm trying my best to learn everything I can. I researched for two weeks before I even got my first one. But if you feel like there's something I don't know, feel free to tell me. It doesn't hurt to over knowledge someone, I guess. My balls in the picture. Mm -mm. But I'm keeping that audio in. Are they in the background in the mirror? It's too blurry. Oh. <laughs> Maybe the people will get to see my ball out by now. Mm-mm. So Druid is eating a blue bottle fly alive. Which means so I always have about two larvae things in here at a time. This is actually, believe it or not, the first time I've been able to hatch um, a blue bottle fly because I was feeding her larvae or spikes basically and then I got her into um, wax worms and mealworms. So I give her more mealworms because they have more roughage for her uh, digestive system but then if she wants a really big, fatty, gooey meal, um, a wax worm is perfect for that. But then with the blue bottle flies, basically these are just like the best thing for her. This is really healthy. I think it gives her more energy and it's better for her digestive system. And it's more natural to her because um, this is an aviary, um, or no, 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 this is a arborary bug, so basically it's just more fit for uh, flying insects to be caught, you know, in the air because she'll be, she would regularly be in a tree or normally be in a tree if she was in nature. This one, this one is just kind of hanging out but little does she know her hopefully next meal is right behind her. This little fly, uh, I, I called it a fly, but it's basically just an extremely tiny um, moth. You can tell by the, the little antenna that are white. You see, this is it next to my pinky. I just realized there's some blood under, under my pinky. I had a bloody nose earlier, and we're actually not allowed to put turn on our water right now, like from the faucet, because there are... Uh, construction workers working on the pipes outside 
So basically, I have blood under my nail because I literally can't wash my hands right now. Or else they'll come knock on our door and yell at us. Alright. Cool. Druid is such a good girl. I'm so proud of her. Alright, well, I'll see you later. Bye!